The unassuming person may believe that voice acting is reserved only for cartoons, that the poor souls suckered into the job earn about $5 an hour and a horrible reputation. The unassuming person would be wrong. Voice acting has grown into a reputable industry, dealing with such mediums as television, radio, theme parks, retail, and many others. Voice acting is everywhere, and there's no escaping it. In this world surrounded by many talented voice artists you may recognize, you may be wondering to yourself, who is the artist behind that voice? Allow me to answer that question. Okay, so Wes, what led you to a career in voice acting? Led me to a career in voice acting? Wow. It's, it was pretty accidental, actually. Um, I used to work in a recording studio doing jingles and uh, recording bands and all that kind of stuff. And one time uh, there was somebody there who needed a voice for the uh, YMCA campaign we were doing, the Young Camp Counselor. And at the time I was uh, 24 or something like that. And, they, and the guy turned to me and said, you could do this. And I said, okay, what is it? And so I went out, and then I didn't know if I wanted to do it, but then he wrote $100 on the pad. And I said, I can do this. I'm sure I can do this. <laughs> so I, I ran out and, uh, and did it. And I was, in, uh, I was in the drama club in high school and uh, was in a bunch of plays. And, and I had already been playing out in bands for, at that point, you know, eight, nine years. So I kind of knew how to put things across. And uh, that started my, uh, I was the young, by the way, I was the young camp counselor for about 20 years. Uh, even when I was 40, I was the, the young camp counselor, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then, the, then later, when I got into it much b bigger, was because I was doing a jingle for Subway. And this was in about 1988. And uh, the jingle was cool, but it wasn't good enough. And uh, what they call the donut, which is where you put the voiceover, uh, I didn't think it was interesting enough. So what I decided to do was to uh, supply a fake voiceover to the ad agency. Nice. So we sent over the ad. And they called back about an hour later. They go, we love it. We love everything. We love the jingle. We love the voiceover guy. We love everything that's happening. Go ahead. And I was about to tell them, uh, no, that isn't the voiceover guy. That's me. I just, and instead, I just said, OK, if you're cool, I'm cool. And so I did the, the New England subway for about six years as a result of that little uh, inadvertent uh, audition. Right. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. Um, what was how that? Long, how yeah. long did it take you to develop this talent? I don't know how long it takes. You just sort of start doing it. I've mentioned to other people that you just sort of mimic things you hear. I used to mimic things that I hear on the on uh, TV. You know, uh, they'd say uh, great offer, and I'd go great offer. You know, or uh, here's Johnny, or whatever else you want to you want to imitate. Johnny. And uh, so I don't know about developing it. After a while, you get where you can take direction because uh, most of the time, and I would say almost all the time, I never see or hear or talk to my client, uh, except when we're doing um, animation projects. Then we're all in the same room and we're all trying out different voices. Um, but, but when you're doing all the corporate stuff and you're doing all the um, uh, you know, things for commercials, um, those things I never see the client. I just get direction. They just and mostly it's warm and friendly. So, okay, I can do warm and friendly, you know. And uh, so, as far as developing it, I think it's just a, a matter of uh, getting clear on what the client wants from you and be able to deliver it. Yeah. So, um, were you educated or trained, or did voice acting solely come from experience? Uh, no, all my trainings in music and in recording and. Uh, day-to-day -day life. So, uh, no, I didn't have any, any formal training at all. Yeah. So. What was your most ambitious project? Most ambitious project? That would probably be uh, the animatronics we did for the Yankee Candle flagship store in Williamsburg because I was involved right from the inception of that. A lot of times we just get um, scripts, like we just did a thing for uh, Caesar's Palace um, in Vegas, and that was basically just, they just wanted Dracula. So you just provide the voices and you provide the music and stuff like that. Um, 
but the most ambitious was probably the uh, the, the clockwork mice oh, yeah. and the Yankee Candle, uh, because they, were, they they just kind of said, okay, we want clockwork mice, and and so we came up with the names Hickory Dickory Dock, and by we I mean um, the, their creative guy at Yankee Candle, Bruce Showalter, who's a great uh, creative person. Uh, that's the guy you want to have if you have a blank page, because he can come up with anything. And so we came up with the voices, we came up with the characters, we came up with the look of the place, and uh, I think we wrote like 40 songs for it. Wow. Um, and we had to sing it, we had to cast it, so that was, that was pretty ambitious. You know? Thanks for agreeing to do cool, that. Cool, man. Yeah, so. Nice to see really you all. Interesting, certainly.